2025 has started great for SpaceX. In the first month alone, they launched multiple missions, including one Starship flight. With such a strong start, many of us believed that this would be the year SpaceX would reach new heights. However, just three months into the year, things are not looking as good as expected. The company is facing major failures and falling behind schedule, especially with their Starship rocket. In this video, we will talk about these failures and analyze how they might impact the company. Before we delve any deeper, please make sure to subscribe to our channel for future updates about Starship and SpaceX's other groundbreaking achievements. Most of us follow the developments surrounding the Starship rocket, eagerly waiting for every test flight and major milestone. The excitement around its potential for deep space exploration often overshadows another crucial part of SpaceX's operations, the Falcon 9 rocket. While the recent Starship explosion grabbed headlines, SpaceX's workhorse, the Falcon 9, has been facing its own challenges. Known for its unmatched reliability, this rocket has been the backbone of SpaceX's launch schedule for years. However, recent failures and setbacks have raised concerns about whether the company is pushing its launch frequency too far, testing the limits of even its most dependable rocket. One of the most alarming incidents occurred on March 2nd, when a routine Falcon 9 mission ended in failure. About 85 seconds after liftoff, a fuel leak was detected in the booster, causing kerosene to spray onto a hot section of the engine. While this did not immediately lead to an explosion due to the lack of oxygen at high altitudes, the problem escalated after the rocket successfully landed on the drone ship. Approximately 35 seconds after touchdown, the leaked fuel mixed with enough oxygen to ignite a fire inside the engine bay. The flames spread quickly, severely damaging key components, including the landing legs and structural panels. In a matter of seconds, the booster lost stability and tipped overboard, marking one of the rare occasions that a Falcon 9 booster was lost after landing. This failure was particularly concerning given Falcon 9's impressive track record. The rocket has been the most frequently flown and reused vehicle in SpaceX's fleet, completing an unprecedented number of missions in recent years. In 2024 alone, Falcon 9 had already completed 26 launches by early March, more than any other rocket in the world. While most of these missions were successful, the increasing number of launches naturally raises the likelihood of encountering technical issues. The rocket's reusability has been one of its defining features, with many boosters flying over 15 times. However, pushing hardware to its limits always comes with risks. Landing has always been one of the most complex aspects of Falcon 9's reusability. Unlike traditional rockets, which are typically discarded after launch, Falcon 9's first stage booster is designed to return to Earth and land vertically for reuse. This process involves a series of carefully controlled maneuvers and burns to guide the booster back safely. The landing sequence begins with a boost back burn in some missions, where the booster fires its engines to adjust its trajectory, if returning to a landing site near the launch pad. If the mission profile does not require a return to land, the booster follows a ballistic arc toward one of SpaceX's autonomous drone ships stationed in the ocean. As the booster approaches re-entry, it performs an entry burn, reigniting a subset of its Merlin engines to slow down and protect itself from the immense heat generated by re-entry. Without this controlled deceleration, the rocket would experience extreme aerodynamic forces and heating, potentially damaging its structure. The entry burn is critical in ensuring the booster maintains a stable orientation and does not tumble or burn up on descent. Finally, in the last moments before touchdown, the booster executes a landing burn, firing its engines once more to bring its speed to near zero for a controlled landing. During this phase, the booster extends its four titanium grid fins, which help steer it precisely toward the landing target. These fins play a crucial role in fine-tuning its trajectory as it falls back to Earth, acting like the control surfaces of an aircraft. SpaceX employs two primary landing methods depending on the mission profile. Ground landings occur at one of two designated SpaceX landing zones at Cape Canaveral, Florida. These landings are preferred whenever the rocket has enough fuel remaining to perform a full return flight. 
The advantage of landing on solid ground is that it simplifies logistics, as the booster does not need to be transported back from the ocean, reducing turnaround time and refurbishment efforts. Drone ship landings are required for missions where the rocket does not have enough fuel to return to land due to the high energy required to deliver its payload into orbit. In these cases, the booster targets one of three autonomous drone ships stationed in the Atlantic or Pacific Ocean. These drone ships, named Of Course I Still Love You, Just Read the Instructions, and A Shortfall of Gravitas, are essentially floating landing pads equipped with powerful thrusters to maintain their position despite ocean currents. The use of drone ships allows Falcon 9 to conduct missions that would otherwise be impossible with traditional ground landings. Landing on a drone ship is significantly more challenging than landing on solid ground. The ocean surface is constantly moving due to waves, and despite the drone ship's thrusters working to keep it steady, the landing platform is never perfectly still. High winds and rough seas can introduce additional difficulties, making precise landings a complex task. SpaceX has refined its landing techniques over the years, using enhanced navigation systems, advanced algorithms, and real-time telemetry adjustments to improve accuracy. In the past, landing failures were more common due to factors like hydraulic grid fin failures, engine thrust variations, or software miscalculations. However, today, Falcon 9 boosters have a high success rate in landing, with over 90% of missions successfully recovering the first stage. Despite these improvements, the increasing launch frequency raises concerns about how much stress the hardware can endure. The March 2nd failure was also not an isolated incident. Just a month earlier, on February 1st, another Falcon 9 mission suffered an upper stage issue. After successfully deploying its payload, the rocket's second stage was supposed to deorbit in a controlled manner. However, due to a liquid oxygen leak, the thrust vector control system froze, rendering the upper stage unable to maintain the correct trajectory. As a result, it re-entered the atmosphere in an uncontrolled manner, with debris later found in a field in Poland. This was an extremely rare occurrence for Falcon 9, as SpaceX has a well-established system for safely disposing of upper stages. The fact that this happened so soon after another failure raised concerns that SpaceX might be facing deeper engineering challenges. The increasing launch cadence could be one of the primary factors contributing to these issues. In 2023, Falcon 9 flew 138 times, already a record-breaking number for any rocket. For 2025, SpaceX has set an even more ambitious goal, over 180 launches. This means that on average, a Falcon 9 mission would need to be launched every two days. While the rocket is highly reusable, this frequency puts immense pressure on the engineering teams responsible for refurbishment and maintenance. The loss of a booster like B-1086 due to a preventable fuel leak suggests that some systems may need additional inspections between flights. Another factor to consider is the shift in focus towards Starship. SpaceX has been dedicating enormous resources to developing its next-generation rocket, with Starship flights becoming a major priority in 2024. While Starship represents the future, Falcon 9 is still responsible for nearly all of SpaceX's commercial launches, satellite deployments, and NASA missions. If too many resources are diverted to Starship, Falcon 9 operations could suffer from reduced attention, leading to minor issues being overlooked. The recent failures suggest that even well-established systems require constant vigilance. Despite these setbacks, Falcon 9 remains the most successful rocket in history. No other launch system comes close to matching its cadence or cost-effectiveness. Even with the two major incidents in early 2024, the rocket has successfully completed more missions than any other vehicle. That's it for today's video. Thanks for watching.